right, how much worse can things get for the big tech titans now that they've collapsed? And I'm not talking about today's bounce. See, the last couple of weeks have been downright apocalyptic for so many tech companies that we used to think of as consistent winners, kind of secular growth businesses that worked in both good times and bad times. Not anymore, though. With a few exceptions, the fundamentals have gotten much worse for Fang and friends. But it's not just that the numbers are ugly. These stocks went out of style in the Wall Street fashion show a year ago. Yeah, literally a year ago this week. And this earnings season has confirmed that Wall Street made the right call. Now, despite today's pop, things have gotten very ugly. And there's also a psychological component because these big tech outfits keep making their biggest supporters look like morons. That makes everything a lot harder for their stocks. How much harder? Okay, tonight, because we've got to be objective about this, we're going to go off the charts with the help of Carolyn Baroden. Now, she is a brilliant technician. She teaches at the IM Academy SFX, the Stocks and Futures Academy, because we've got to get a better read on what's happening with big tech. And I've got to tell you, I can turn to her because this group is so confounding. Specifically, we want to look at three of them. We want to look at Amazon, Alphabet, and NVIDIA. First, though, you need to understand what's changed. Take a look at this daily chart of Amazon. This is going to be, this is going to blow your mind. Uh, from back in 2020, the good old days, the halcyon days, at least for this particular breed of Internet stock. Obviously, not so uh, good if you were living through it. Broden says this is the old paradigm, where Amazon had an incredibly bullish technical setup. The stock was in great shape constantly, making a general pattern of higher highs and higher lows, exactly what you want to see. At the same time, the stock was trading above both its 200-day moving average and its 50-day. So you've seen it's got to be above this and this pretty much. Well, look. Look at this. I, I, all the time. Plus, Broden likes to look at a particular buy trigger. When the five-day exponential moving average, the blue line, okay, crosses above the 13-day. And, boy, have we ever seen that. Look at this. So clear, right? Every time. Red line, which says, this you got to pass, got to pass, got to pass, got to Always right. Uh, that's when she thinks that it's a great setup. It's exactly what we had in Amazon two years ago. So what did we get? We got one of the greatest rallies I've ever seen in my whole life. More importantly, every time Amazon pulled back in 2020, you could safely buy the dips and you'd make out like a bandit. It was a great playbook then and for most of 2021. But it keeps getting people killed in 2022. So let's take a look at 2022. Check out Amazon's daily chart for this year. Broden points out that it's almost the exact opposite of what we were looking at in 2020. Amazon's made a series of lower lows and lower highs, forming a clear negative pattern. See? Lower, 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 lower. The stock's below both its 200-day, that's this one, and its 50-day, that's this one. Uh, it, it, these are crucial. Her exponential moving average trigger, the 5-day versus the 13-day, it's now in bear mode. That's this crosses that, okay. And uh, it's underneath the 13th day. This is terrible. Take a look at that. Everything that could be wrong is wrong with this stock. In Broden's view, this kind of chart absolutely does not support buying the dips. She thinks you're taking your life in your hands if you do that, even after the stock's been eviscerated the past couple of weeks, or like me, think it's an unbelievable long-term picture. As Broden sees it, there's nothing in this picture to suggest that Amazon's ready to bottom now. That said, there's one more thing she's looking at here. Roden likes to take past, uh, she likes to take into account past swings in a stock, then run them through the prism of Fibonacci ratios to project future moves, both in terms of their scale, price, and their duration, time. Right now, she says Amazon's got a cluster of Fibonacci time cycles coming up, which means there, there's a chance the stock could potentially make an important low this week. However, even if Amazon can temporarily find its footing, Roden thinks the overall pattern here is so negative then any rally would be short-lived. If the stock does bounce, yep, she recommends that you ring the register. What could make her turn more positive on Amazon? Well, the first thing that would have to change is the exponential moving average crossover. Um, and we talked about that. That's right here. Um, uh, she'd want a few days of upside that would allow the five-day to cross back above the 13-day. That would be the first indication of a short-term rally. But again, that by itself doesn't mean the stock's bottom. So we don't necessarily, if it goes up like that, we're ne not necessarily going to call bottom. So um, what can I say? I look at it, and I think if they made the big, big cuts that they need to make, then we'd see this break out. Clearly, she does not agree with my thinking. Next up, how about the daily chart of Alphabet, the artist formerly known as Google, where I think they're getting disciplined. 
Roden says this one's in a similar position. Alphabet's trading below both the 200-day and the 50-day moving averages. Let me see that. The 200-day is this. The day is this. And by the way, let's call it, let's not miss words, appreciably below. It's got a general pattern of lower lows and lower highs. Again, that's what we see over and over and over. Very, very negative. Exactly what they hate. Chartist. The five-day exponential moving average is below the 13-day. Again, just awful. And that's, remember, her personal sales signal. She's saying sell this. In her view, like so many other big tech names, quite a lot of technical damage has been done to Alphabet, especially over the past few weeks. They've turned real bearish, and Broden doesn't believe that they can shift back to bull mode overnight. Of course, she thinks it's possible to get some oversold rallies here. The stock has a lot of resistance on the way up, though. You've got a bunch of ceilings running from eight from 88 to 93, that's pretty far from here. Uh, given the lack of anything bullish in this chart, uh, Broden wouldn't bet on Alphabet breaking through this ceiling. Uh, she's so negative. Now, there is one horrifically beaten down tech stock that's actually showing signs of improvement, and that one is NVIDIA, although Broden stresses that this one's still not out of the woods. After spending roughly a year lost in the wilderness, NVIDIA's recently started bouncing which is really incredible because, boy, it's bounced on bad news. Uh, in fact, the five-day exponential moving average uh, has now crossed above the 13-day. don't want to obscure that. That's, the, that's crossed above the 13-day, and that's Broden's buy trigger. It's fired. While the long-term pattern in NVIDIA, though, is still heinous, and that's the long-term is this one, okay, down, down, you know, look at that, down, 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 okay. Uh, Broden says the short-term pattern looks a lot better. Since the October lows, the stock's actually made a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. This is important for me because they pre-announced. They pre-announced a bad quarter, and then they didn't, did it, and it wasn't good, and the stock bottomed. That's very positive to me. But that's only a possibility. Broden also says NVIDIA is not out of the woods yet because the stock's still trading below its 200-day moving average, which is very far above here. Uh, and, of course, the longer-term pattern going back to last year remains incredibly bearish. Even if NVIDIA can maintain its recent momentum, she points out that the stock's facing major ceiling of resistance between 147 and 150, another ceiling around 152. So it needs to jump some serious hurdles if it's going to get its groove back, and that's pretty hard to imagine. If you want to make a short-term bet on NVIDIA here, she actually sanctions it, but she does say it's a big risk. I say that as someone who's a big believer in this one longer term. Then again, as I've told club, investing club members endlessly, this simply isn't a good market for the semiconductor stocks. And she, I can tell you, the bounce, even though she says it's the best one, I certainly, when I sat down and thought about all the stuff she's saying, uh, it, it's uh, inconclusive. Bottom line, the big tech stocks have been hammered from their highs, but the charts interpreted by Carolyn Broden suggest it probably isn't safe to start bottom fishing, even if those charts begin to improve a bit. Amazon and Alphabet simply aren't in buy the dip situation. Like I said, a little bit more positive about NVIDIA because it started to turn. But she says don't get your hopes up for too long. I hope that's not the case. Doug in North Carolina. Doug. Hey, booyah, buddy. How you doing, Drip? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Hey, Jim, what are your thoughts on the home builders, in particular DHI? You know, they seem to be holding up, even though the market itself seems to have had the emergency break pulled on it. We've got earnings coming up this Wednesday. Kind of wanted to see your thoughts on on them, as well as uh, Lennar and KBH and the, the sure. sector as a whole. I mean, the, you know, this is one of those situations, frankly, Doug, where the stock should be lower. Uh, the increase in mortgage rates is so aggressive that it's very hard for me to hear them say anything good. I, maybe this time's different and they've gotten their act together better, but I think the canceling rates are going to be very high. I don't want to own them going into those quarters. I think we buy them after. Probably get them cheaper. Let's go to Marcus in New Mexico, please. Marcus. Jim, let's get that uh, amusement park built here in New Mexico. What do you say? I am telling you, i got 300,000 acres all set for Disney. They just don't seem to be listening to me. How can I help? Hey, I got a quick question for you. Uh, ETN or ABB, both plays on electrification and the grid, similar wow. margins. ABB is cheaper, better dividends, but ETN has had better five-year stock yeah. performance. What do you say? That Eaton conference call was a thing of beauty, and they are the EV charging stage. They are all the equipment you need to be able to convert this whole country into a, a, a situation where we could be solar generated. It's much more better than Germany. Hey, it's only sunny in Germany like 27% of the time for heaven's sake. Right. Anyway, I like your call. The charts, as interpreted by Carolyn Broden, suggest it isn't safe to, to, to make a bottom fishing call in tech. 
Amazon and Outfit aren't in the buy the dip situations. NVIDIA, a little bit different. But much more may have money at, including my exclusive with Nysource. In the face of market volatility, maybe we should be thinking about a utility company like Nysource. I'm learning more about the story myself with the company CEO. And FinTech used to, FinTech used to be a market darling. So could new fears surrounding the sustainability of the cohort be warranted? I'll give you my take. And of course, all your calls rapid fire tonight's edition of the lightning round. So stay with Kramer.